Upside down in the middle of nowhere, chapter five. Daddy was staring way too long at that cardboard map, map again. Are you getting worried about the hurricane, Daddy, I asked. We need to keep an eye on it, Daddy mumbled mostly to himself. Then he looked up at me and smiled. He folded the map. But we'll be fine. He stuck the folded map and a chart in his back pocket. Lord willing, Mama said to no one in particular. He was standing at the sink with Colleen holding onto her leg. I started bringing the dirty dishes to the counter by the sink. Daddy came up behind Mama, careful not to step on the baby, and put his arms around her waist. She looked at me and shook her head. A sweet smile lit up her face. Daddy buried his face into her neck. She squirmed a little, and I seen those rose color creep into her cheeks. But she kept right on washing dishes, and he kept right on nuzzling her neck. Tay-Tay sat on the kitchen stool with her glass of sweet tea wrestling on her bottom lip, just grinning with dreamy eyes like she was watching magic. I smiled inside and out, loving my parents so much right then I could have burst. Mama cleared her throat and said, Miss Curtis, I'm trying to wash dishes. He rested his chin on the shoulder and said, hmm. Mama grinned and shook her head again. You know, Daddy, he said, looking at me but talking to Mama's ear, we don't have any time to worry about that storm. Tomorrow's a big day. Someone I know is making ten. And we're not going to let some storm ruin the most important day of the year. Finally, Daddy was talking some sense. He reached in front of Mama and dipped his finger into the soapy dishwater. She playfully slapped the back of his hand, but a clump of bubbles still clung to his finger. He stretched, it out his, stretched out his arm and put the glob on the tip of my nose, and it tickled. Daddy, I whined with a giggle. Tay-Tay, quiet, laughed behind me. Mama grabbed the dry dish towel and gently wiped, gently wiped off the bubbles on my nose. Daddy kissed the top of my head and gave Mama a play slap on her backside before he left the kitchen. Then when I looked down, I seen Colleen sound asleep, still holding tight to Mama's leg. Me and Tay-Tay grabbed pickles from the giant jar on the counter and went outside, and the wind had picked up. We found us a shady spot in the crabgrass under a, peeling cra under a peeling crepe myrtle. We tried hard not to move around too much while we finished our pickles. It was too hot. It was, it was, hot. It was hotter than a jalapeno bathing in Tabasco, and muggy as all get out. The wind wasn't helping none, neither. It just felt like swirling hot oven air. I noticed Tay-Tay sitting there not doing nothing while I picked through the grass trying to find a four-leaf clover. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, Tay-Tay shrugged. Me and my dad had a huge fight, she said, picking at the grass. I love behind being around your mama and daddy. She lifted her head and the wind caught hold of her hair coming loose from her braid. I scooched over behind her and took her braids down so I could fix it. Someday I want to marry someone who looks at me the way your daddy looks at your mama. Yeah, I guess, I said, trying to get her uneven ends to stay put inside the braid. But sometimes it's embarrassing, you know? She tried to turn her head back at me, and I nodded her back around the front so I could fi finish fixing her hair. So what y'all fight about this time? She shrugged again. I don't know. He just yells and screams. He don't need a reason. He could start an argument in an empty house. Yeah, he's a mean old snake, all right, I said, tapping her shoulder in a way that let her know that I was finished messing with her hair. And ugly, too, Tay Tay tried to hide a grin behind her hand. Yeah, and his breath smells like armadillo poo. I said, with a real attitude, sliding my head with my chest puffed out. Tay-Tay threw a handful of grass at me and smiled. She had the prettiest smile at everyone. And when she smiled like that, it spread all the way to her eyes. He's not always like that, you know, Tay-Tay sifted through a clump of clover. I raised one eyebrow and cocked my head. Well, he sure is every time I see him. Yeah, I know. She shrugged and kept her eyes glued on the clover. But most times he's normal, you know, when he's not. Drunk? I went on and said the word because I knew she wouldn't. Yeah. You miss living with your mama? Tay Tay lifted her head and looked at me straight. No. We never even talked about any of her family business before, and I was trying to think of a good way to change the subject so it didn't look like I was meddling. But the truth was, I wanted to understand why my cousin was always sitting wrapped up in all that sad. Right then, she got a little smile on her face and shook her head. I remember one time when they had a fight about something stupid and Mama threw a whole supersized order of french fries at my dad. She gazed up into the air when the wind blew that same chunk of hair loose again. She smiled big and looked at me. I'll never forget that scene, all them fries flying through the air like that. She reached up and tried to tuck the loose the hair behind her ear, but it was too short and wouldn't stay put. Girl, it was like the sky opened up and let loose french fries. She let out a quiet laugh. It was crazy, all right. She was back to picking through the clover. Without looking up, she said, I remember Mama slapping me hard just because I ate a couple fries off the floor. I ain't trying to be truthful or hurtful, but I seen the inside of Tay-Tay's house when her Mama was still staying there. 
I got a picture in my head of my cousin eating food off them disgusting floors. Girl, that is nasty. You ate fries off the floor? Yeah, but I was a little kid, you know. Don't tell anybody. We looked at each other in a way only real friends know how, and we never tell. We went to picking through the clover some more. Mama was the mean one, Tate said right out of nowhere. She was? I barely got the words out of Tate. Uh, words out. Tate never talked about her mama, ever. Yeah, she said, lots of people think it's because of my daddy that she left, but it's not. Mama left because she wanted to, plain and simple. Wanted to, plain and simple. She was the mean one, Armani. She, tur she turned my daddy mean. I wanted to hug her and tell her I was sorry that anyone would ever be mean to her, but I kept looking at clover and crabgrass instead, and I swiped at the beginnings, swiped at the beginnings of a tear in my eye. Tay Tay let out a long sigh. I wish I'd find someone like Auntie Catherine. It'd be nice to have a new mama. Yeah, I said, but it would have to be someone who won't mind kissing a man with poo breath. Tay Tay tried to hide her smile, but spread too big. And if your daddy and his new wife had a baby, oh my gosh, Armani, look at four leaf clover. Sure enough, the girl was holding onto a big four-leaf clover, and I could barely believe my own eyes. Tate looked all cross out of the little green plant. That's exactly what I'm going to wish for, a new mama and a brother or sister. I sat smiling and nodding, not having a clue how to tell my cousin that clover ain't for making wishes, but everybody on the planet knew a four-leaf clover is for bringing good luck. The screen door screeched open, and Georgie popped his head out. Hey, Tay, -Tay your daddy just called. He says you need to come home. His fat head disappeared, and the screen door slapped shut. Tay-Tay's smile slid up her face. So much for luck. She sighed and got up real slow, brushing herself off. Tay-Tay said in a silly, deep voice, Poophead called and wants you home, and I fell out laughing. She shoved a handful of grass and clovers down the back of my shirt and took off running for the screen door and laughing the whole way. Mima came huffing into the kitchen. Mama was braiding Celie's hair, and I was washing more dishes. Mama had braided mine earlier, and it was so tight my whole head throbbed I could barely blink my own eyes. Catherine, I got a bad feeling about the storm. Mima picked up a towel and started drying the dishes. She looked over at me, covered in all of her, covered all of her face with the towel except her eyes, and gave me a secret wink. I smiled and I shook my head, and I went back to scrubbing something dried stuck on a sippy cup. Mama Jean, I think you're worrying too much. Mama said the last weather report had the hurricane going east of here. Mister Curtis says we'll probably get some wind, and Lord knows we need the rain. I knew why Mama called her Mama Jean. It was so us kids wouldn't get all confused with too many mamas in the house. But I never did understand why she called Daddy Mr. Curtis, like they weren't married or something. Well, I know those fancy folks on television are predicting, but I'm telling you what my bones are saying. I have a bad feeling. Mima set her dish towel down and turned off a huff into Mama's face. I got a good look at her, and I knew that she was on, I knew that look on Mima's face. She was still worried. I stopped scrubbing. Mama shook her head with a smile and kept parading. So I took, shook my head, too, and went back to washing and scrubbing. After supper, me and Daddy were sitting outside the front porch steps when, Mr. Scott, uh, when old Mr. Scott from down the road came over and told Daddy that the store was running out of water, and we best hurry up and get some before it was gone. After the man wandered off to go inform someone about the disappearing water, I asked Daddy how come people were buying water when all they had to do was go to the faucet where it seemed to be plenty of water. He took a deep breath. Well, we need to be prepared, Armani. Mother Nature can be unpredictable. But, Daddy, I thought you said the storm ain't coming here. He looked up at the dusky sky for a while, and I seen worry pass over his face like a dark cloud causing a shadow. Then he smiled a handsome smile and bumped his shoulder into mine. We're going to be fine, Armani. I giggled and shoulder bumped him back, and he looked at me with his milk chocolate covered eyes and shook his head real slow. I can't believe my little girl is having another birthday already. I'm not, I'm not little, Daddy. I'm fixing to be 10. I wish you would realize I was practically grown and not a little kid anymore. You're growing up all right. He put his arm around my shoulder and pulled me in close for a big bear hug. Too fast, if you ask me. It was one of those cozy hugs that lasted a long time. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, Armani. Now stop worrying about that storm and let your Mima do the worrying. She worries enough for all of us. I'm not worried, Daddy. Good, he said and stood up. He grabbed a hold of my hand, helping me to my feet. Now run along and tell your mama. I'll meet her at the truck. Yes, sir. And I headed for inside when Daddy called my name. Armani. You always be my little girl, you know, he winked and walked up to his truck. I folded my arms up across my chest and stomped off to find Mama.